I'm Brian Parks from Belimo Technical Support. Today, we have a video to show you how to install and set the S1A and S2A auxiliary switches on a Belimo damper actuator and a Belimo valve actuator. So here I've got a few samples to use for the demonstration. I've got an S1A, I've got an S2A, I've got an LMB24-SR, and I've got an LRB24-SR. The S1A and the S2A are identical when mounting them on the actuators. The only difference is that the S1A has one switch, the S2A has two switches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to mount the auxiliary switch on the LMB24-SR. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this indicator ring and the black bracket that's holding it on. I'm going to set that to the side because I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to take the S2A and the first thing that I do with the actuator, I'm going to push the override. I'm going to move the actuator full counterclockwise up against the stops. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the auxiliary switch. And if you notice, on the bottom of the auxiliary switch, there are two pins on this black plastic piece here. And then there are two pins on this side of the brackets. And they're going to line up on the side of the actuator and click in there. So what I do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to start sliding it down. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that the two black pins go into this bracket here. Once they do, I push it down until it clicks. Then the next thing that I do is I'm going to take this orange indicator ring and I'm going to put it on the actuator. It shows me the position of the actuator. And so now what I want to do is I want to set the switches. I'm going to push this override here and you see I can take and I can move the actuator freely. And so this is in the full counterclockwise position. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to back off a couple of degrees because I want the switch to make before the actuator moves to the full counterclockwise position. I'm going to take a small screwdriver and I am going to turn it until the arrow lines up with this black line that's on the actuator. So what's going to happen is, as this actuator moves to this full position, the switch contact here is going to make. Because this has two switches, I can now set this switch so that when the actuator moves to the full clockwise position, this switch will make. So the same thing, I'm going to take and I'm going to move this arrow so that it lines up with that black line there. So as the actuator opens and closes, the switches will make. Now I'm going to show you how to mount the auxiliary switches on a valve actuator. Today I've got an LRB24-SR. And the very first thing is, what you would do is remove this handle off of the valve. And just for ease of making the video today, I've got one off to the side. Under the handle, there is a rubber O-ring. And we want to take and remove that. You can use a small screwdriver and you can pry that out and you can discard the O-ring. I've already done that on this uh, valve actuator here. And uh, the next thing that you're going to do is in the box with the uh, auxiliary switches is a small plastic adapter plate. And if you notice, you see the little silver uh, piece here, that's part of the hex key that you can use to remove the actuator from the valve. And on the bottom of this plastic plate, we have four little tabs that are sticking down. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to move the actuator to the full counterclockwise position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and place this on here. And if you see the orientation with the two holes here, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the S2A switch and I'm going to rotate the two pins so that they're fully in the counterclockwise position. And what I want to do is I want to get these two pins into these two holes here. And so I'm going to come over to the actuator and I'm going to slide this down. And I'm just going to turn it up. I, I want to make sure that the two pins are in the holes. And as you can see here, they are. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to firmly push until I hear the click. So now I can push the override. And as you see, as I take and I move the handle on the valve and the actuator that the uh, valve does move. So the next thing I'm going to do 
is right now it's in the full counterclockwise position. And what I want to do is I want to switch to make just before it goes to the full counterclockwise position. So here I've got the S1, S2, and S3 switch contacts. And what I'm going to do with a little screwdriver, I'm going to line up the arrow on this little part here. And you want that arrow to line up perfectly with this black line. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the override again. I'm going to move the actuator to the full clockwise position. And I'm just going to back off a couple of degrees. I'm going to come over to this auxiliary switch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also line up the arrow so that it's perfectly in line with the S4, S5, and S6 contacts. So as the valve is opening or closing, when I get to almost full counterclockwise, the switch will make. When I move to the full clockwise position, the switch will make. Okay. Thanks for watching the video today. If you have any questions, you can call Belimo Technical Support at 1-800-543-9038, or you can go to www.belimo.us. Be sure to like the video and be sure to follow Belimo on the YouTube channel. Thank you.